Shavnam Diaries Podcast Hare Krishna everyone, we are continuing to read the Bhagavad Gita as it is. The book by His Divine Grace, Abhay Charanaravinda Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Jai Chapter 12, Devotional Service Texts 13 to 15. Advishta Sarva Bhutanam Maitrah Karuna Evacha Nirmamo Nirahankara Samadukha Sukhakshami Santushtah Satatam Yogi Yatat Madridha Nishchaya Mayar Pitamano Budhir Yomad Bhakta Same Priya One who is not envious but is a kind friend to all living entities who does not think himself a proprietor and is free from false ego, who is equal in both happiness and distress, who is tolerant, always satisfied, self-controlled and engaged in devotional service with determination, his mind and intelligence fixed on me. Such a devotee of mine is very dear to me. Purport Coming again to the point of pure devotional service, the Lord is describing the transcendental qualifications of a pure devotee in these two verses. A pure devotee is never disturbed in any circumstances, nor is he envious of anyone nor does a devotee become his enemy's enemy. He thinks, this person is acting as my enemy due to my own past misdeeds. So it is better to suffer than to protest. In the Srimad Bhagavatam 10.14.8, it is stated, Whenever a devotee is in distress or has fallen into difficulty, he thinks that it is the Lord's mercy upon him. He thinks, Thanks to my past misdeeds, I should suffer far, far greater than I am suffering now. So it is by the mercy of the Supreme Lord that I am not getting all the punishment I am due. I am just getting a little by the mercy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, he is always calm, quiet and patient, despite many distressful conditions. A devotee is always A devotee is also always kind to everyone, even to his enemy. Nirmama means that a devotee does not attach much importance to the pains and trouble pertaining to the body because he knows perfectly well that he is not the material body. Hmm. He does not identify with the body, therefore he is freed from the conception of false ego and is equipoised in happiness and distress. He is tolerant and he is satisfied with whatever comes by the grace of the Supreme Lord. He does not endeavor much to achieve something with great difficulty. Therefore, he is always joyful. (laughs) He is a completely perfect mystic because he is fixed in the instructions received from the spiritual master. Mm, That's why he is a perfect mystic. He is fixed on the instructions, right? Mm. And because his senses are controlled, he is determined. 
Hmm. So determination comes from control. This, I mean, this entire poor part. I was like every single sentence. I want to like I want to focus on the poor part and read it, and then we'll come back and just speak about ba- speak about it point point point. Okay. Okay. So let's read the sentence again. He's com- he's a perfect mystic, completely perfect mystic, because he's fixed in the instructions received from the spiritual master, and because his senses are controlled. He is determined. He is not swayed by false arguments because no one can lead him from the fixed determination of devotional service. Goodness gracious, Jai. No one can lead him from the fixed determination of devotional service. He is fully conscious that Krishna is the eternal Lord, so no one can disturb him. Wow. All these qualifications enable him to fix his mind and intelligence entirely on the Supreme Lord. Such a standard of devotional service is undoubtedly very rare, but a devotee becomes situated in that stage by following the regulative principles of devotional service. Furthermore, The Lord says that such a devotee is very dear to Him, for the Lord is always pleased with all His activities in full Krishna consciousness. Jai, what a poor part. I would like to remember this particular verse very much, so that's why I'm going to go um, from the translation, sentence by sentence, and I would like to like either say something in my own words or how I understand it to make a point to make an impression in my mind because this this is just phenomenal I mean I love this particular at this point of time I really needed to hear this <laughs> okay so one who is not envious but is a kind friend to all living entities right so the only reason we're not kind friends to all living entities is because we're envious but as soon as we're not envious then we are kind wow kindness actually in kali yuga kindness is such a rare quality isn't it i remember primanjan prabhu saying that uh, many times people join krishna consciousness just because people are nice <laughs> you know <laughs> like devotees naturally like they're aware of this and they're trying to you know they're trying to appreciate everybody and uh, if they're basically envy what is envy right envy means somebody else has it so i want to have it so devotee is like they um how do you how do you call it they kind of switch it and they start serving that person or appreciating that person you know instead of envying so naturally it brings kindness right So opposite of kindness is envy. I remember uh, what's her name? Shamla Saki Mataji, she gave us example that jealousy means like like mm, he has a nice skirt. Like I want a nicer skirt or something like that. But envy means like I want to you know like rip that skirt apart. You know something like that. Meaning like envy doesn't exist in the spiritual world it says what is that advieshta non envious right so meaning you don't want to harm the other person because he has something that you want <laughs> that was the definition that mataji gave us at the bhakti shastri very important extremely important many times you know like when you see some unkindness and you're like wondering why me <laughs> this is why <laughs> okay who does not think himself a proprietor and is free from all from from, from, from <laughs> what did I, from false ego free from false ego it's like a tongue twister free from false ego okay who is equal in both happiness and distress okay Tolerant, always satisfied, self-controlled, engaged in emotional service, with determination, 
his mind and intelligence fixed. See, we're, we're talking about intelligence and mind fixed again, right? So Krishna, he he spoke about this at first, right? That's where we also made a point about it. Engaging all of our intelligence and fixing our mind, right? And then Krishna went to gradations that if you can't do this, if you can't fix entirely upon me, then you can follow bhakti yoga principles, rules and regulations. Then if you can't do that, work for me, work for the cause of Krishna consciousness and so on. And now we've come full circle back. Krishna establishes again who is a pure devotee. And now we're going to read the purport. And he says that such a devotee is very dear. So we're if we want to become very dear to Krishna, I'm sure we all want that. So this is how to do it. Let's go to the purport because every single... I feel that every single sentence in this purport is like a sutra that you can... And you can give a seminar on this <laughs> every single sentence from here. Okay, I really, really want to remember all of this. Coming again to the point of pure devotional service, let's. I will. I will not read it. Read it, but I will just want to highlight some points. So, Prabhupada starts right. A pure devotee is never disturbed in any circumstances. Wow. Right. So, well, and what are we? We are disturbed very much. In fact, sometimes, most of the times, we can't control our disturbance. <laughs> I can speak for myself. So, and it doesn't mean that we can never reach this stage, isn't it? It means that we're aspiring, we're cultivating, we're progressing, and we know that this is the gold standard. That this is that. Um, lighthouse on the shore that we are fixed on right never disturbed in any circumstances nor is he envious of anyone Mm -hmm. this is interesting right he doesn't become his enemy's enemy he thinks he's acting as my enemy due to my own past misdeeds better to suffer than to protest he doesn't protest yeah that's, I think, to protest, like, it's, it may be, like, a natural reaction, because that's how we reacted since time immemorial. But a devotee, this is the way he thinks. He's like, better to suffer than to protest. Hmm? <laughs> yeah. Okay, then, that Kampam verse was quoted... Then the mentality of thanks to my past misdeeds, I'm supposed to suffer much more, but I'm getting just a little. Mm -hmm. We are so, a devotee thinks, I'm not actually getting my due, I'm much worse. Or as Vrindavan Yashvari Mataji once told me that when people criticize us, it's better to say that, oh, they don't know me, (laughs) I'm much worse. (laughs) So that's actually how devotee thinks, he's like, wow. So much suffering. Actually, I'm supposed to suffer much more. It's, it's supposed to be much worse than this. But thanks, Krishna, for minimizing it. It's mercy. This is the way devotee thinks. Da, da, da. He, he is always calm, quiet, and patient, despite many stressful conditions. So we can see that uh, pure devotee is very stress-resistant, right? He is very... Shock proof. <laughs> he is, wow. I was just thinking that I was just reading the book of Sukhavaha Mataji. And uh, she was explaining how the process of trauma, according to medical science, works in our brain. So I was reading all of that. And I was like, wow. And now reading this, I'm like, yeah, pure devotees. You know, like their body is spiritualized, isn't it? So their brain doesn't work the way our brain does. And actually for me, the whole process of like this year, I would say that this year is the healing year for me. Like the entire year is like a healing year. (laughs) So the biggest um, lesson I can draw is that if we are not transcendental, don't imitate transcendence (laughs) and just be on your own level and humbly aspire for the best, aspire for the topmost, 
but know where you are to basically follow the path properly. Okay. So devotee is calm, quiet, and patient despite many distressful conditions, right? That's Kunti Devi, right? Kunti Devi, she was like, let these calamities come again and again. <laughs> and we are play, praying, Krishna, no more calamities. <laughs> I'm gonna die next time you send me more. <laughs> okay. A devotee is also always kind to everyone, even to his enemy. Even to his enemy. Hmm. So near mama means that a devotee does not attach much importance to the pain and trouble pertaining to the body. Because he knows perfectly well that he is not the material body. So this is the difference also. He knows perfectly well, perfectly well. If we don't know perfectly well, and I'm sure he doesn't just know, he, he realized it. So he doesn't attach much importance to the pain and trouble. When, when I try to not attach much importance to pain and trouble, um, I'm being stupid because um, the pain and trouble is going to mess up with my body, with my health, and then I will not be able to continue my sadhana bhakti. So this is very important, that we should not take the first part and leave out the second part. So unless you know perfectly well, you're not the material body. And that usually means that you know perfectly well what is your spiritual body. You can't really imitate this. This is a big lesson. It's something that we should, we should know that this is perfection. But we can't imitate it. And I'm just saying it from my realization. Next. He does not identify with the body. He is freed from conception of false ego and is equipoised in happiness and distress. He is tolerant, okay, satisfied with whatever comes by the grace of the Lord. This is interesting, right? Next sentence. He doesn't endeavor much to achieve something with great difficulty and therefore he is always joyful. So many times we get upset because we're trying to achieve something with great difficulty and it doesn't happen even then. But the devotee, he just doesn't endeavor much to achieve something with great difficulty. <laughs> he accepts what comes by the grace of the Lord, right? Hmm. Actually, I'm going to go back to this import. He doesn't give much importance to the pains and trouble, actually. You know, um, it doesn't mean that a devotee doesn't deal with them. Like, I think that, I mean, I just told that this doesn't apply to, a, to my level of devotional service. But actually, I'm just thinking about it right now. And I think that it does apply. Meaning, if there is some pain and trouble pertaining to the body, and I intelligently deal with it, I don't give much importance to it. Because I know I'm not the body. I know that. And that's why, actually, maybe that's why devotees at the beginning, they, they realize they're not the body. And they're so happy. And, you know, Kirtan is wonderful. Prasadam is wonderful. I'm not this body. Thank God I'm not this body. But then there's pain and trouble. And we don't give much importance. But we don't apply our intelligence. Because it may not be important. It may not be much, much important. But there is some element to it that we're still going to like live in this body for some time. So it's, it's almost like when you're in the car and you're like, I'm not this car. And something broke in the car and you're not emotionally attached. You're like, oh no. You know, there's some, some people that are very emotionally attached to their cars. It's like, oh no, there's a scratch. Ah, you know, but like, okay, there's a scratch. Okay, you know, you can fix it. It's nice to take care of this instrument of ours to serve Krishna. That's fine. But it doesn't it's not given as much importance as the soul, right? So this is the correction that I would like to make for myself. Okay, so where we, did we stop? Yes. So he is a completely perfect mystic because he's fixed in the instructions received from spiritual master. 
this is just actually I remember instructions of the spiritual master I remember when in 2014 when I just completed my Bhakti Shastri I went for uh, Iskon Disciples course by Lakshmi Moni Mataji and I have to tell you that uh, Lakshmi Moni Mataji she really um, kind of infused me with this very strong Guru Nishtha you know she was like like really like it was very heartfelt for me that basically like I want to surrender to Shri Guru to the spiritual master and I was also remember at that time I was like looking for different quotes of Srila Prabhupada regarding the surrender to the spiritual master and surrender to the instructions of the spiritual master and basically we have a Sayatmika Buddha here it was all like very very much my main focus at that point of time 2014 and um, and throughout these years I can clearly see that when you're really fixed on the instructions of the spiritual master something like here Prabhupada says completely perfect mystic I mean he speaks about again this is pure devotional service level but even on like my level I can tell you for sure that something magical does happen something magical happens when you just fix yourself it's like you're fixing yourself and that's something that I feel sad about the Ritviks because they don't have a spiritual master right if i'm not mistaken i mean i am not mistaken i mean i'm sorry to say this but um like Srila Prabhupada, he gave a particular um formula how guru disciple relationship works you serve the spiritual master you hear from spiritual master and you surrender to the spiritual ma- master you question meaning pariprashnena you're asking submissive questions to the spiritual master so and then that that this process is just so like Shri Guru acts as the instrument from Krishna he's the external manifestation of Chaitya Guru he's the external manifestation of Shri Guru and when you fix your um, your consciousness your endeavors your life on the instructions of Shri Guru it just like something magical happens and it's it's truly like I know many devotees who will like cent per cent agree on this point cent per cent ask any devotee like be it a disciple of um, like Guru Maharaj or like Jayapataka Maharaj or Radhanath Maharaj or uh, Gopal Krishna Goswami Maharaj it's like that's just and it's really exciting and it's wonderful so if anybody wants to see a miracle <laughs> you just fix yourself in the instructions of spiritual master and you will see so many and it will become it will become uh, normal <laughs> in your life because you're surrendering to Yogeshwara Krishna Yogeshwara and the representative of Yogeshwara so okay next and because his senses are controlled he is determined so again I heard I heard <laughs> I read that Srila Prabhupada said that the only way to maintain Brahmacharya is to fix yourself on the instructions of the spiritual master and interestingly this is in the same sentence right he is fixed on the instructions of the spiritual master comma and because his senses are controlled so when you fix yourself in the instructions of the spiritual master then only your senses can be controlled that's something Shil Prabhupada mentioned I remember clearly because I mean that's my thing I I find nice quotes and I publish them on my wall and then I see them many times and then I remember them so Prabhupada said that if you want to be a brahmachari 
you have to serve spiritual master you have to be super attached to your spiritual master that's how to do it so he's all he's not this is important also he's not swayed by false arguments because no one can lead him from the fixed determination of devotional service determination so we many times we say that on the level of kanishtha adhikari devotees um they're not their faith is very um soft and um, they can be defeated by arguments right but here this is a description of uttama adhikari Actually, Madhyam also. Madhyam Adhikari, he, his faith is strong. He's also not swayed by false arguments. Because he understands that basically these false arguments, they can only mislead from the fixed determination of devotional service. Okay. He is fully Krishna conscious. No one can disturb him. Undisturbable. Like many times when my mom, whoever she calls, and it's something that I picked up, and maybe it's something that some people don't understand why I keep saying that, but my mom, whenever she would call someone, she would say, Hare Krishna, um, I'm sorry for disturbing you. <laughs> it's, it's just something cultural. Cultural. So, and <laughs> pure do it's something I'm just trying to correlate to remember. Okay, fully Krishna conscious person, no one can disturb him. So all these qualifications enable him to fix mind and intelligence. This is something that, again, we came in back full circle, right? That in last to last episode, we were discussing that fixing your mind and all of your intelligence entirely, Prabhupada here says, entirely on the Supreme Lord. So now remember when I, when I mentioned that, you know, that there are some devotees who are very, very intelligent in their material life, but for some reason in their spiritual life, I, I, it's not very uh, genti- genteel thing to say, like this, like to dumb being yourself down, you know what it means? To dumb yourself down, meaning like, you know what is the best thing to do? You have the brain to kind of mastermind many things. But you're kind of dumbing yourself down, meaning like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, let others do it. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. So I'm not saying there are many people <laughs> like that, but I just know some very specific cases, very nice characters, very awesome devotees, but they could be doing so much more. There's so much more potential in them. So basically, and this potential will naturally unfold when they will become more and more Krishna conscious, right? So here it says that basically all these qualifications, this is what enables, Prabhupada uses the word enable, this is what enables him to fix his mind and intelligence entirely on the Supreme Lord. So having a lot of intelligence is is a very nice qualification and, uh, and let us use it entirely and fix our minds. Jai. So, and then, of course, Prabhupada says, such a standard of devotional service is undoubtedly very rare. So, yes, it's a very, it's a topmost level. It's it's a high level. And here, Prabhupada gives us a reassurance that a devotee becomes situated in that stage by following the regulative principles of devotional service. Okay, and in conclusion... The Lord says that such a devotee is very dear to him, for the Lord is always pleased with all his activities in full Krishna consciousness. So, um, in Naparayaham, Srimati Radharani is describing that uh, Prema, Prema Bhakti, she flees at any attempt of others to describe what she is. But Something that can distantly describe Prema Bhakti. It's what will please my beloved and what will displease my beloved. So here, this is definition of Prema Bhakti. That uh, the Lord always pleased with all his activities. That's Prema Bhakti. Pure Prema Bhakti. Jai. Okay. I think we will stop here because... 
I would really like to emphasize this, these verses, beautiful verses. Okay. Ah, one more thing I would like to mention is that um, yesterday I mentioned this devotee Nila Chala Mataji from Russia and her husband and they're very nice preachers and very nice couple they've been married for more than I think 15 years if I'm not mistaken so yeah her husband's name is not Dmitri it's Oleg for me it's like uh, I don't want people to have a wrong idea because I think they're gonna be touring around India so like if anybody like Nila Chala, Harinama Tour, Hare Krishna, her husband is Oleg very nice couple yeah, Hare Krishna Thank you so much for tuning in today. The book links, previous episodes, timeline, and biography of the author can be found on shravanamdiaries.com. The link is in the description, and we shall see you tomorrow. Hare Krishna.